2017 in review, a look back. Tokyo Eye 2020 introduces the charms of Tokyo to the world. As 2017 comes to a close, let's take a look back at some of our favorite discoveries of the year. Welcome to Tokyo Eye 2020, showcasing one of the world's greatest cities and the hosts of the 2020 Olympics. Hello, I'm Chris Poplar. Here behind me are the titles of every edition of Tokyo Eye from 2017. All of these are available on demand on the NHK World website. Let's take a look at some episodes that have been especially popular on demand. First up, some areas we've showcased this year. Ginza, a popular sightseeing spot in central Tokyo. Kichijoji, known as a great place to live and explore. Plus, two neighborhoods that have been gaining attention recently, Akabane and Senju. Let's take a look. Ginza. Ginza is Japan's most famous shopping district. It's close to Tokyo Station. Hi there, I'm Deborah Ten, bringing you the latest news from Ginza. That. It's the largest department store in Ginza, and it just completed this April. We're going to check it out. Let's go. This huge department store opened in April 2017. As the centerpiece of Ginza's redevelopment, it's been the talk of the town. It contains 241 shops, including boutiques for many of the world's top luxury brands. It makes a point of showcasing the best of Japanese culture. Wow, look at that. Its interior is decorated with many works by Japanese artists. These balloons are the creation of avant-garde artist Yayoi Kusama. On the sixth floor is a store specializing in art books. This bookstore is very beautifully designed. It's so many books, all sorts. Oh, and kabuki too. It carries around 60,000 volumes, covering traditional and modern art from Japan and around the world. They have a sword shop in a bookstore. Yes, there's even a section devoted to Japanese swords. Blades forged by master swordsmiths. And decorative fittings fashioned by fine goldsmiths. These authentic modern blades are crafted by a clan with 400 years of history. And they're for sale. Here is one of the bookstore's most impressive items. Reprints of Shunga masterpieces by ukiyo-e woodblock print artist Kitagawa Utamaro. Shunga is an erotic artistic tradition that emerged in early modern Japan. Celebrated for its elegance, it's recently been exhibited by many museums around the world. the drawings, and they look really elegant and not sensual or erotic in a, in a bad way, but it's really beautiful. Kichi Joji. According to surveys, Kichi Joji is one of the most desirable neighborhoods to live in in Tokyo. It's less than 20 minutes from Shinjuku by train. When Tokyoites think of Kichijoji, one of the first things that comes to mind is Inokashira Park. This street leads from the station's south exit to the park. It's lined with shops selling clothing and novelty items. The park is a 10-minute walk from Kichijoji Station. 
イノカシラパーク Japan's first public park It's built in a suburban area and is centered around and named after Inokashira Pond. Entrance is free. Beloved by the people of Kichijoji, it has long served as a symbol of the neighborhood. Every weekend, Inokashira Park hosts a unique social event. Arts and Crafts Festival, where you can buy items like handmade jewelry and accessories. Kichijoji is also popular for its range of unique shops, like this one. Ah, this is so cozy. Its main attraction is these hammocks. The cafe also serves as a hammock showroom. Ice cream, chocolate with nuts. <laughs> Visitors can literally hang out while enjoying a variety of food and drinks. Akabane. Akabane is known for its unpretentious old fashioned shops and pubs and its reasonable prices. The neighborhood is located about 15 minutes from both Shinjuku and Tokyo stations. It's recently been growing in popularity. So here I am in Akabane, where I hear there are lots of drinking places. Let's go. There's a drinking spot in the neighborhood that's open in the morning. Jennifer heads on over. Oh, look here, there are so many people. I wonder what kind of shop it is. It must be a good place. Everyone is happily chowing down on steaming bowls of stew. This is a classic type of Japanese comfort food called oden. This eatery has been in business for over 50 years. The main ingredients in oden are a variety of deep fried items, a minced fish and vegetable dumpling, for example. You also get chunks of daikon radish, boiled eggs, and other ingredients, all simmered in a soy sauce broth. Here's a selection of items recommended by the owner. The reddish bits in this patty are pickled ginger. Bon、mm. mm. It's really, it, the, the texture is really nice. It's firm, but not too firm. And there is some ginger in it, but not too much ginger. Many customers here wash down their oden with sake. Once you've drunk about 70% of your sake, you're ready for this eatery's special treat. Oden broth is poured into the remaining sake, and a dash of spicy seasoning is added. This drink is called dashiwari. Oh my god, this looks so good! <laughs> ah! Mmm! The sake with the soup's umami, you know, all this,、uh, the, the ingredients, umami, that goes in it with the hint of、uh, red pepper. Oh my god! Mukita! <laughs> Senju. This former post town retains a nostalgic old Tokyo atmosphere. Located in the north of the city close to Asakusa, Senju can be reached from Tokyo Station in 20 minutes. Just a short walk from the rows of modern buildings near the station. A different atmosphere reveals itself. And we 
we've only come, what, ooh, 50 metres from the station. And already suddenly the street's narrower, the buildings have got lower and everything's closed in. Let's go and have a look down here. And suddenly the street is getting even narrower. Senju is notable for its many small alleyways. These narrow streets spread out like tendrils in every direction. As he walks, one building in particular catches Nick's eye. It's a kura, a storehouse used to preserve things like food and sake in the age before refrigeration. The thick walls of these storehouses are fire and moisture resistant. In present day Senju, many remain and have been remodeled to serve as stores and restaurants. And I think it might actually be something like a cafe. So let's go inside and have a look. Hi, konnichiwa. This one, which has been turned into a cafe, was originally a pawn shop. Items traded in by customers were stored behind these iron doors. Over 30 centimeters thick, they are virtually impervious to both fire and thieves. Fantastic old room. Um, I love the old decor. It's like being in my uh, grandmother's house or something. Wow. The high ceiling and faint lighting of the century-old warehouse give it a unique atmosphere. The cafe has some unique options too. Taiyaki is a Japanese treat shaped like Thai, sea bream, and filled with sweet bean paste. Mm. Very good. I have to say, it does go very well with this lovely um, fresh made iced coffee as well. Mm. Fantastic. Next. Tokyo is one of the gourmet capitals of the world, with plenty of great places to wine and dine. I'm a big fan of sake and Japanese cuisine, which made these delicious episodes some of my favorites. Enjoying a drink. The Japanese drink known around the world, sake. Like wine, it's fermented with yeast, but uses rice as its main ingredient. Tokyo is currently undergoing a sake boom. So I'm here in Nakamegoro, and along the street, underneath the rail lines, there are a series of eateries and bars that specialize in various kinds of food. But I've also heard that some of them specialize in sake. This standing bar is particularly popular. The secret to that popularity is a self-serve system that takes the pressure off ordering. Wow. <laughs> Yum, 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 yum. Oh my gosh. What am I going to choose? This all looks great. You've got so much to choose from. This is called a sake server. Customers choose the kind they want and serve themselves. This place is known for its oysters. Rebecca chooses a sake made in a part of Hiroshima Prefecture famous for its oyster production. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> So milky and mineral rich. So, is it a good pairing? Oh wow! That pairing works perfectly. The sake really pulls out the umaminess of the oysters. Next, from drinking to dining. Washoku experiences. 
Designated an intangible world heritage by UNESCO, Washoku, traditional Japanese cuisine, is known for respecting ingredients' original flavors and for expressing the changing seasons. This is a Washoku cooking school for foreign visitors. Over 1,000 people from around the world come here every year. Instructor Ayuko Akiyama is a former English teacher. She created this school to foster international communication through food. Today, the students are learning about decorative rolled sushi. First, the rice is flavored. A combination of sugar and vinegar is mixed into the rice. Using a traditional Japanese fan while mixing the rice is key. Um, by dropping the temperature quickly makes the rice shiny because we put quite a lot of sugar, you know, so it, it's going to graze and cover and make the rice even shinier and whiter. And in Japan, there is a belief that uh, the more, the whiter the rice is, the better the quality is. Just need to stretch it. Rice is spread over nori seaweed. This side on top. It's then topped with cucumber and rolled. And then you can use your hands. The roll is cut in half. Then those halves are cut again to make four pieces. Okay, so four sticks. Then like a Japanese style omelet is added. And the roll is arranged like this. And then this needs to be flat. Then the whole thing is wrapped in nori again. Now you can roll. Every time you roll, make it square. Okay, good. Let's go. Just make it squeeze. <laughs> Very good. For the final step, it's cut into bite-sized pieces. <laughs> and voila! This sushi features a pattern traditionally used to pray for peace. After two hours in the classroom, even these beginners have created beautiful pieces of edible art. And finally, the participants try their own washoku creations. One, two, three, sushi! Okay, one more, sushi! Here are some more titles that have gotten a lot of views on demand this year. Evolving tourist spots, sweets, toys, and souvenirs. Let's take a look. Popular spots evolved. Tokyo's popular tourist spots are evolving to even better appeal to visitors from home and abroad. I'm very excited. I can say that this place is a heaven for the animal lovers like me. So I'm super excited. Let's go and see what the animal cafe is there. Let's go. Wow. It's very lovely space. It's like a very woody interior with some brick exposed. Oh, it's a hedgehog. Is it? Oh, it's sleeping. Oh, come on. <laughs> This is the world's first hedgehog cafe. It first opened in Roppongi in April 2016, followed by this Harajuku branch in February 2017. Can I hold it like this? Hello there. Oh, he wants to sleep, I guess. He just sleep on my hand. So, oh. Look it's just like a, a giant egg, I guess. It's quite big. Like this big. Okay, be nice. Time for Pinta to give it a try. Hello, guys. You're finding some food? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't, 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 don't. Just go away. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. It's still alive. Mealworms are a hedgehog delicacy. Okay, maybe he's on diet. Oops! <laughs> wow, you see that? Just in one second. 
A worm disappeared. Ooh. Wow. Newest sweet treats. Japan is known for its high quality fruit. This shop spares no expense with its lavish fruit based treats. Wow, look at all these fruits! Wow! The shop is known by customers from in and outside Japan for its seasonally based sweets that employ fresh fruit. Takashi Nagamine, seen here stocking up on fresh fruit, is this store's proprietor. In the business for over 50 years, Nagamine is a connoisseur of good fruit. With his keen sense for the subtleties, he's a practical fruit whisperer. Nagamine's goal is for the whole world to enjoy Japan's sweet, delicious fruit. This cake is made with premium shine muscat grapes, currently hugely popular in Japan. Shine muscat grapes are relatively new to the scene, created in Japan just a decade ago. With no seeds and edible skins, they're perfect for desserts like this one. The cake contains a generous helping of these large green grapes. This musket is incredible. Mm. The cake doesn't hit you like with super sweetness, but it's a really, really subtle sweetness. And this musket, I've never had anything like this. The coolest toys. Walking down the main street of Ginza, where there are many department stores and tourists are enjoying a day of shopping. I am here because there is a toy store that is biggest in size with the biggest collection of toys, so I'm gonna go check it out. This toy store was founded in 1982. There are five floors filled to the brim with toys, about 200,000 items in total. Aside from typical kids' toys, there's cartoon character merchandise, video games, robots, and much more. Around the store, you'll find toys you can pick up and play with. This is こちらにちょっとお話ししてみてください。え、このおもちゃにですか？オッケー。I okay. love dancing. すごい。日本語でも大丈夫です。英語でも大丈夫です。どの言葉でももう反応してくれるので。Wow. This is so cool. Look at all the details. Here's a type of toy that has soared in popularity among tourists in recent years. All wood craft sets. It's like a 3D puzzle. You remove the pieces from the sheets and then put them together. Even the smallest parts are incredibly detailed and some of the sets even move. This is like super Japanese-y, so to say. Like, you don't see stuff like this anywhere else in the world. Spectacular souvenirs. Finally, a look at some of the many unique, attractive souvenirs that can be found in Tokyo. 
This is a shop specializing in lifestyle goods. One floor is especially popular with tourists. It's dedicated to stationery. One item in this section is particularly popular. These pens with ink that can be erased by applying friction. There are apparently many tourists who come all the way here for these pens. Yeah, I live in UK, mm -hmm. but yeah, we've got, but not, not many choices like this. Oh. This floor has also been gaining popularity recently. It's dedicated to healthcare items. Look at what I found. This is just a whole section of toothbrushes. Over 300 types, varying in color and shape, each one is unique. These items have become popular for their uniquely Japanese attention to detail and design. This brush has a very unique shape. It can be adjusted to a variety of angles. This makes it easier to brush those hard to reach back molars. These Japanese nail clippers are also popular. This one is equipped with a magnifying glass. This allows users to view their nails closely for a precision cut. This store contains over 100,000 items. Finding that perfect souvenir is an exciting adventure of its own. There you have it, some of 2017's most memorable Tokyo discoveries. Remember, Tokyo Eye 2020 episodes can be viewed on demand for one year after they air, so check out the site for an even deeper look. 2017 is winding down, but next year is sure to bring even more great things to Tokyo. And we'll keep showcasing them on Tokyo Eye 2020. Have a happy holiday season and a happy new year. For more on today's program, check out our program website.